a five quid Carlsberg beer called Elephant, you've got to be having a giraffe. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today I'm taking a look at this it is called Elephant by Carlsberg it is a 7.5% lager and to be honest I don't think I've ever reviewed anything by Carlsberg at least certainly on its own so this is something of a first and not something I'll be honest I thought I would ever be doing but hear me out I was trawling through beers of Europe the other day and you're gonna hear me say that a lot in probably the last couple of videos and the next few beery videos because well that's where I got my most recent beer haul from and they had this it said it was new in stock and I'll be honest I'd never heard of it Carlsberg Elephant a 7.5% lager which while is distinctly similar to Carlsberg Special Brew in the UK which despite I believe actually being made originally for the Queen is now more associated with well a park bench so yeah, bit of a hard sell, but I thought, you know what, it's an import, it might actually be some Carlsberg from the source, from Denmark, and that, well, might just be worth trying. And then I looked on the back of this label, and it says brewed in Germany. Now, of course, there are far worse places in the world to brew your beer, but it still starts to add a few more questions. It is just a little bit odd. A bit of research into this bottle suggests that actually it's quite big in India, which is where the name possibly came from. But of course, that is also possibly just a little bit of internet speculation. So anyway, 7.5% lager, Carlsberg Elephant. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I'm intrigued to see what a premium offering from Carlsberg looks like. This cost me the best part of a fiver, which, well, by Carlsberg standard is very, very expensive. So I am intrigued. This is what it looks like. It's, um, well, it looks like a Carlsberg bottle with a few different labels slapped onto it, if we're honest. It's a big 500ml bottle, but yeah, pretty standard stuff, if I do say so myself. As soon as I open the bottle, that is a very distinctive kind of Carlsberg export slightly skunked funk note coming off that, which is a bit of a concern, but hey, it is what it is. Right, standard lager glass for this. In the glass, it looks pretty decent. Massive amounts of carbonation. Can you see that running through? Of the glass there big foamy head on it this glass has got the nucleator thing at the bottom so it's probably a bit more active as a result of that but i mean it's meant for lagers and pilsners and well that's what this is so makes sense to use it if very aggressive though it has to be said nice deep mm, yeah golden straw color it's not super rich but it's also not super pale and pilsnery either yeah looks pretty decent right then aroma time it does smell like cheap lager. It's actually reminding me of those little French stubbies. I did a video comparing loads of them a while back. Instant flashback and regret, if I'm totally honest with that one. Just, it pongs, you know what I mean? Like it's got this skunky, funky note that feels like it probably shouldn't really be there. It's quite mellow. It's got a bit of a grassy hop note to it. It is a touch sweet in places, but it's not proper malty. It's just kind of yeah, generic, almost synthetic sweetness. Um, it doesn't smell bad, like overall. It's not offensive, but it doesn't fill me with hope either. I'm going to be entirely honest. Right then, enough waffling. Let's get into it. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. What a curious beer. All throughout that, about every two seconds, I was going, oh, no, this isn't very good. Going, well, actually, it might be one. No, this is not very good. And then maybe, actually, it's quite not. No, no, I would say. Very up and down, to say the least. It's um, undeniably Colesburg mass-produced lager. Like, there is no getting away from the fact that it does taste, well, like every other cheap supermarket lager can that's a bit long in the tooth, if I'm honest. But despite that, it does have a couple of small redeeming features. First off, the body on it is just better than everything else. Like it is just that bit thicker. It's that bit more looks. It's far from really what I would call excellent, but certainly quite acceptable for what is well, just a mass produced lager. And of course, the amount I paid for this is relative to the fact that it had to be specially imported. It's not a UK product. So if it were to be on sale here, it would be quite a bit cheaper. And then yeah, and at that point it's maybe not so bad. It has got some proper, proper German lagery notes though. It's like, mainly on the aftertaste if I'm honest, sweet, 
biscuity malt, really nice barley, cereal rich edge to it. It's It's got some presence, but it is just kind of affected by the fact that you're reminded of where it's come from. It tastes like all of the other stuff, and I'm sure that is intentional, but yeah, for a special beer, it's not really what I'm after. Right then, quick top up. And time for a top to bottom taste test. So initially, right on the tip of the tongue, sweet, spiky, booze is prickling away already at that 7.5%. There's a little bit of a grassy, fuggy, mulchy hop note. Definitely a traditional European hop, but it's like, yeah, I'll be honest, it's like it's been on the compost pile just a little bit too long. Then over the first third of the tongue, getting softer, sweeter, slightly honeyed, and it's your first impression that that actually might be more to this than just a generic cheap lager. You're thinking, actually, this might get really good. And as soon as you think it, it just comes in with this slightly kind of astringent, bitter. It's not over the top, it's not overly bitter, but it just reminds you again of a crabby old bottle of Carlsberg. Like, it just does. It's funny because, well, they had an opportunity here to do something different, to make something bigger, better, like a showpiece, and I'm sure they're not bothered about doing that. They make enough money anyway. They don't really care, I'm sure, but, or at least, based on that, it doesn't look like they do, should I say. Anyway, over the mid palette, slightly metallic, Feels like you're going to get a bit of kind of a mineral water quality note, but it just cuts short. That metallic note is kind of a, normally a precursor, and if it's really metallic-y, then it tends to be a less bit of a kind of quality mineral water profile on it. But it's nearly there, it's nearly tipping the scales, and it just washes away. Like, you don't quite get there. It's not bad, though. Like, it's not a bad flavour, it's just... It, it sets you up with the anticipation of something far greater than it really is. Anyway, on to the back of the tongue. And I think the back of the tongue really is where it's showing that it is just another Carlsberg product. It's got that, you know, too long on the compost heap, hot profile comes back in. A little bit of bitterness, it's not too sharp, it's nice, it's refreshing, but it's accompanied by that, yeah, slightly stale hot note. It's got a few sweeter notes, but it's quite synthetic, a little bit. Kind of brewer's sugar, brewer's syrup. Some it's a note that you often get in Belgian beer, and it's not a bad thing in those beer styles, but here it's it's there's not enough other stuff to kind of blend into it. It's quite obvious. Um, I would assume, anyway, that's where they're getting that ABV from, because there's definitely not the, uh, the malt value in here, from what I can see, anyway, to achieve it. On the aftertaste, though, slightly floral, slightly grassy, bitter, and it fades into some proper, nice, sweet, biscuity malt. The aftertaste on it is fantastic. It's just ruined, kind of, by... The rest of the experience when it's in contact with your tongue it's a really funny one this don't go out and buy this for four pounds something that i paid for it honestly like there is far better out there at that price like it's just not worth it but if you are in europe and you happen to see it and it's a couple of euros just to kind of appease your own interests it's not a terrible time the more you drink it the more you get acclimatized to those well frankly poor quality flavours and the bits that are nice start to shine through a bit and it's not bad but well it's better than any other Carlsberg product I've ever tried hands down but that's not exactly a tall mountain to climb so yeah you know it's it's fine it is fine I've tried it you probably don't now have to unless you're really into Carlsberg lager for some reason but it is what it is really it's just another amped up lager that it's wanted more flavor for seven and a half percent it shows so much promise in some areas and if they just refined it a bit more made it a bit more expensive i actually believe like they could produce something genuinely quite special because like a seven and a half percent lager that's well pretty rare really um it's kind of into german bot territory and if i'm being kind about it Actually, the fact that they managed to balance it off, it's not too hot, it's not too pokey, it doesn't feel overproof, which is effectively what it is for its style, it's a bit more pills and a leaning. Um, they've done a pretty good job, to be fair, it's just that the points where they've kind of scrimped and saved and used their generic hops and whatever, yeah, it, it's let it down just a bit too much, but loads of promise, 
but just not quite enough delivery. And that's really all I can say about it. Are there any other Euro beers I should try pitch against this one or something similar? Let me know, please, in the comments below. But otherwise, this has probably been a bit of a shorter video, but that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.